was one hell of a hike yesterday, but it was so good. I always come to this resort, Coco Resort, after a good hike. This place gives such a good ambience. It's a mixture of both traditional and modern texture plus design. And to wake up to this view is just heaven. It's going to be a great day today. I can just feel it in my bones, you know. I'm driving towards in the roads of Poro, so that's the Poro Zong. It has a traditional design and everything, and it's one of the oldest zongs in Bhutan. And the airport is right out there on the side. You can see the mountain is snowed up there. It was really, really cold, so this is the road, how it looks like. It's pretty much simple, decent. And I'm driving manual because we don't, we can't drive auto in, uh, in our country because it's hilly and it's on the mountains. The weather is very nice. It's, I think it's about, say, 10 degrees Celsius and I'm not that cold, I'm not that hot. It's perfect, it's medium. Um, yeah, you see, you don't see this in Malaysia. You don't see, but it's, you look at the farm and look at the views. It's, this is just home. This is where I was brought up in. And we have locals, so it's locally made. The vegetables and everything is locally made, the rice. It's nice to drive. No traffic lights at all. It's something we're very proud of actually. Right now it's winter, it's still winter. So you can see why the trees have no leaves and such. I started driving like what, I was like 16. My mom is pretty persistent. So she lets me drive like big cars. She's like, no. You can drive small car. You need to learn quickly and you need to learn fast. You have to be confident. So when I started driving in the hilly areas, like you can imagine, right, that adrenaline and everything, it's really, oh yeah, we're going to stop here. So you can imagine when you're driving in the mountains and it's so scary because no divider, no such things. And that was my like first time driving it down and my legs were like this. Be stern, Pinda. You can do this. That's how I learned to drive in the mountains. But anyways, we're here and we're just right uh, beside the yep, the Parizon. It's right on my left. We're gonna just gonna take some pictures. We were very surprised that uh, she just left her job at a construction firm. She was working in Malaysia and then she wanted to be a gamer and very surprised a woman joining the gaming spot. And first we didn't know how to react, but uh, we were very happy to support her 
and uh, we are very glad that she's doing very well and she has a lot of fan following in Bhutan and recently she came on the national TV uh, in Bhutan and uh, we could see that uh, you know a lot of people the youth of Bhutan were very inspired by her and uh, for a woman to be in the men's world it's a very difficult thing but she has walked on it so we felt very uh, grateful that uh, she has become the, uh, a gaming person. I was really spoon-fed by both my grandfather and grandmother. I would say I'm very fortunate to have a family like them, to have them as my grandparents, because just imagine I chose gaming over construction and civil engineering, and they are okay with it. My grandfather, he's in construction, and my mom's in construction. It's only natural for, for me to be next in line to follow construction, but I didn't. I chose esports. I chose gaming over my degree. So when they said it's okay for me to choose my gaming, you can just see how much they care for me, how much they care about my happiness and my decision. The <laughs> so I'll always be thankful. Whatever I do, I think it'll never be enough. So I just want them to be proud of me and I feel I want to do more than what they did for me. But I, I'm, I know I can, but still then it's a hope. It's a, that's another dream for me. That's just another sideline. One of the biggest goal I have. She's a natural actor. <laughs> Talk to the camera. Uh, what do you like to say? Here, what are you playing? This. Because it's a fighting game. We want to be a gamer like Ajim Pinda. Hey guys, give me a I want them to become professional players. I mean, they love games, so go for it. I will always support you, and you know, I'm always here as a sister. Of course, I'm gonna get, drag you into a gaming career, so that's natural for me. We're here at Dochila Pass. This is a place where there are 108 stupas. It's called like 108 chitans. It was like built by the eldest queen mother, Ajidoji Wanchu. Yes, Ajidoji yes, Wanchu. She built in the memory of the soldiers who fought in the 2003 battle. Do you know, do you know who, who built this uh, chitan? Ajidoji Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm really shocked. Guys, she actually oh, answered my she question. She answered the question. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. Like, I'm, I'm really, truly shocked. Okay. It's really freezing. We're going to take like few rounds. It, it's must that you have to take at least three rounds. It's very like for religious purpose. So yeah. yeah Guys, come and go. join us. Come and join us. The girls, come. Let's go. Me, me, me. Okay, me, me. Girls, be careful. Be careful. <laughs> That's right, I'm the boss. <laughs> you know, you have to draw, draw in the positive energy, energy. Okay, and yeah. Yeah. take out all the negative energy. Yeah. Think good thoughts. God, new color make yourself. <laughs> I just don't know if you answer it correctly, right? Answer it easy, right? Unbelievable, lad. 
This is one of the temples, right? This is one of the temples, and it's centered right in between 108 temples right here. Since this is the main one, we come up here and we offer our prayers, we pray, and then we head back. Like, this is a must when you visit here. We were driving towards uh, Punaka. So on the way, uh, I saw uh, this old grandmother. It's freezing cold. It was like about two degrees Celsius outside. And she had a shirt, which was very huge. She had a, a wrapper, which is not even covering her legs. She was walking barefooted. And I went to her. I had my jean jacket. I gave her that, and when I saw her feet, it's cold, and I just went to the nearest store. I got her, I got her a pair of slippers, got her a sock. When I was putting on the socks, her feet, I could literally feel her feet was, it felt like stone. She couldn't even, I'm pretty sure she couldn't even feel the pain from walking on stones and broken things, broken materials. She kept on mentioning about being cold. She said it's very cold and she said she hasn't eaten and she was hungry. She kept mentioning about um, some kids throwing stones at her. And I think she's about 87. That's what the people told me at the uh, restaurant. to the restaurant and she sits down. She looks so adorable, to be honest. And then, restaurant, he tells me that she hasn't eaten for four days. For four days. Nobody bothered her to give her some food. People complain that they haven't had food for a whole day and it's such a big issue. But she, being 87 years old, she hasn't eaten for 40. She ate it the way she ate it. It's, it was, she was so hungry and... I don't know how long she's gonna live with that condition. I mean, I know she's old, but she she deserves better than that. As a people, as being in one country, as a small country, we need to help each other out. We need to, we need to give, we need to share, we need to learn how to share. We have enough, we complain about our electronics, we complain about stuffs we don't have, we complain about little things, and there are people who can't even have food for four days, like four days. Her chest was bare open, it just...
them go, let them run Pass in shadow and the sun My mom, she's sacrificed so much. I just want to do be proud of me, that's it. I know I didn't follow your path or Juju's path or something like that, but I followed something I wanted to do. I followed my passion and these two willingly agreed to let me take what I wanted. In gaming, it's not easy. <laughs> but mom, she just, she said, okay, go for it. After knowing how much she sacrificed for me, and actually it's because of her, I joined sports, I played badminton, I played basketball, I played, I was into dancing. It's because I look up to them, and probably that's why I pushed myself to try everything else. I wanted to develop my interests and find, find out my talent. Turn away. And she's the one who would always tell me, um, you have to be independent. You cannot depend on anybody. That's how life goes. If you start to depend on somebody else, then you'll never be, you'll never make a name for yourself. You'll never become an independent. You'll never become a strong person. Basically shaped me into who I am today as a person. She's the one who's taught me my moral values, how to respect everybody else. She's the one who always constantly reminds me about balancing. That's how I do everything else. Like, it's all about balance. She would always say, you know, people say they can't do it, but it's not that. It's just they don't try. They don't balance things out. You can always study and you can game. So always know your roots. Always know where you come from. Those are the words she always reminds me every now and then. <sighs> My grandfather, <laughs> I don't have the words and I don't have the strength to thank him and after all that, after what he's done for me, after what he's sacrificed for me, after all this, it's just, yeah, I, I, the only way I can repay him back, I don't know how I can do that, but um, is to make him proud, to keep doing good, to keep making things better to make him see that what I chose as a career, what I have right now, it was worth it. Everything, the sacrifice, so that's my responsibility and I will not back out, definitely. Just do that. And uh, even though she's working in Malaysia, she always keeps in touch with us. She's become really famous, um, not only in Bhutan, but even in Malaysia, Philippines, everywhere. I hope she still uh, remembers her roots and uh, keeps that in mind. Uh, even though you, uh, we are far apart, um, you have always kept in touch and I hope you do the same. And uh, when we meet, it's like, we haven't been apart, it's like so easy to get, get along with you. And I would say, please stay the same and we love you. We love you, we love you. We love you. I want to thank you, it'll never be enough. It'll never ever be enough. All I hope and wish for is to do you proud, to keep doing you proud, and at the end of the day, to have your back as your daughter, as a sister, as your granddaughter, as a niece. And just know that no matter what happens, I love you. I'll always love you and always be there for you and thank you.
for everything.